Good afternoon, everyone. Kilauea eruption, 30,000 feet in the air, but here's some images from the U.S. military news at that same height so you can see the explosive ash coming out. Now, back down on the ground a couple days prior to the massive event, I started to overlay and mirror some of these images, and this is what I came up with in the volcanic ash cloud. Now, everybody's talking about fissures on the ground. I found an interactive map that I think you're really going to like. And again, when we're talking about these cycles in history and cycles with our sun, it's about the atmospheric pressures driving our temperatures, not CO2, because we do see repeating cycles in these Kilauea eruptions, 1924, 1790, here 1891. So you wonder what cycle are we really repeating in these explosive eruptions? Mauna Ulu, 1960s, is that the next one to go? They're experiencing some earthquakes up there. And if you were mine, TK sent this in amazing contrails with these smoke rings coming through. And I finished up sending the new PDF talking about the Grand Solar Minimum Changes out to you. If you did not receive it, please contact me back at adapt2030 at oilseedcrops.org and I'll make sure you get a copy. And this video is brought to you by trueleafmarket.com and all the links are below in the description box, including the interactive map. A lot of images coming out, but the first from the U.S. military news at the same height is the volcanic ash cloud, approximately 30 to 32,000 feet. You can see the density of the ash plume coming out of the crater. Prior eruptions with the ash raining out just several kilometers from the vent there. And also when I did show this image last time on the prior video, somebody said, hey, there's a face in there. So I thought, all right, let me just mirror this and see if there's really a face in there. I'm going to let you make your own decisions as to what you see because Native Hawaiians are always talking about Pele. This is what I did when I mirrored it and then I reversed it on itself with actually four of the same eruption just around the center point there. Incredibly interesting some of these kind of fractals or images coming out of it. Turn it in a different direction here so you can get a, a better glimpse. You can obviously pause the screen and zoom in and do whatever you like with these. I just created them for fun because this eruption is incredibly beautiful, incredibly spectacular, and nature is just awe-inspiring. And there's so many ways that if you take a look at these ash clouds and you cut them and you put them together and you mirror them, you find, you know, what looks like dimensional gateways and fractals of people using different types of hallucinogens, but it's in grays, it's not colors, so it's just a little bit different, but it's very similar. With the newest explosive eruption, you know, they have these projectiles raining down miles from the crater itself. And my whole channel is devoted to recurring cycles on our planetary weather systems based on what's happening on the sun. And I firmly believe some of these eruptions are also caused by effects from our sun. So Climate Dispatch has a new article out here about how atmospheric pressure drives temperatures, not CO2, not gases. And when we do talk about this, magnetosphere loosening, jet streams wandering, it all comes back into these cyclical patterns here. These types of explosive eruptions, now you have to ask yourself, we're going back into a grand solar minimum. So which of these are we going to repeat first? The 100-year cycle at, say, 1924? Or are we going to go back to the 1790 cycle again? And they have prior eruptions, even back 1,200 years, 2,300 years. So which one of these cycles are we going to repeat? Because obviously the flare-up in this is not just coincidental. Also in Mauna Ulu, 1960s as well, are we going to start to see action up there? Because there have been a couple of quakes in that same area, Mauna Kea, Mauna Ulu, not really making the news. USGS a little bit deflecting on the questions coming out about these areas that are showing some upticks in seismic activity. Nonetheless, again, back to the US military news. They've really done a good job of showing you where the prior lava flows were and Leilani Estates is way over to the right up there where you can see where it says lava. I've been really interested in trying to track all this and go with the individual fissures, etc. So just even last week, the information we had to play on was something like this. We'd had a graphic that was shown out and showed you where the poke-throughs were, where the breakthroughs were. And Paradise Helicopters is still going up every day and showing you exactly where these fissures were. But what's come out recently is this new interactive map 
where you can click on any of the fissures and it brings you to news articles, Twitter feeds, all types of photos. And it's just a gamut and a resource of information. It shows you where the new power outages are due to the newest eruption. It shows where the no-fly zones are. It links every crater. It links every tube. It even shows up there where the Thurston lava tube is. Shows out prior eruptions, shows you where the beaches are closed, which roads are closed, where the roadblocks are. It is an absolutely amazing resource. And I'm so glad for whoever put this out. I don't even know who the creator of this is. But I wanted to bring it to your attention. I've linked it below in the description box as well because I think this is something that we all can use. I mean, you're looking at this fissure right here. Okay, which one is it? What are the coordinates on that? What's the breakthrough? Has it increased? Has it decreased? Has it grown to this size? Don't know, but this interactive, I put on Fissure 20 because that's the latest one coming out. And then it shows you where it's at. Shows you also the lava flows that are coming out of these fissures and it just brings you through step by step. Again, Paradise Helicopters, and you can match up with what's happening with those fissures above ground with what the, I don't know, the local photographers are getting with drone footage and more, you know, standing on top of houses. It's a really good resource to map out everything that's going on. I think it's one of the best out there at the moment. Thought it would bring it to your attention. And also, subscriber of mine, TK, thank you for the photos, said, hey, take a look at this contrail. Jet flew over and it left this puffy smoke ring type of contrail in the sky. He said, hadn't seen it before. I personally haven't seen it like this before. I've seen a couple persistent contrails up there that have something, maybe one, maybe two rings, but nothing like this. It's almost like a different type of propulsion system engine, like poof, 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 poof. Moving through versus what we have is like with the jet flowing out of that. It seems like it could be just an entirely different type of engine that has left this trail in the sky. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. Again, if you did not get the PDF and you're supporting me on Patreon or you sent me money through PayPal, I've definitely sent you these PDFs through my Dropbox link. You should be able to open that up and download it. If you did not get it or you're having trouble loading it, please send me a message at dap2030 at oilseedcrops.org. Definitely get you a copy.